All right. I'm glad you all are on this call with us. Um, we are going to dive right in. There's a lot of new exciting updates that we want to share. And some of them are like deep, more details to come kind of detail or kind of updates, but um, lots of things happened um, and were announced um, at leadership in Arizona. So um, leadership is an event you get invited to, I believe you have to be five-star or above diamond rank. And it's basically the top leaders in our um, company and they get to have a fun trip. So um, I'm gonna go through these and if you guys have anything to add or anything I missed, let me know. Um, we talked about it last week, but Super Weekend is coming up. I posted a link in our team page that if you click on it, they, you can then see the map of what events are near you. It's the weekend of November 5th. There's gonna be a new bundle package with the shakes and energize where you get 20 servings of each, which is like the coolest thing ever because I love the shakes and I love the energize. They're like my favorite products coming out in December. So stay tuned for more details. Um, sure thing, which is maybe, Megan Davies, who does the trainer that does MDF, her new program's coming out December 6th for coaches and preferred customers and December 20th for um, regular customers. So we had a little chat today in our WhatsApp about people being interested in this. And I think we'll probably do a launch group as a team. So, um, Stay tuned for that. We still have some time out, but we normally kick off a launch group about two weeks before it launches for um, us coaches. And we can do all the fun with that. Um, I'm super excited for this program. But as a reminder, we have a lot of launches, so you don't always have to do them all. But if you're excited about this one, we'll all tag up and do it together. Um, the other big change is the name change from Team Beachbody to Body. Um, this seems to be going to be incorporated in 2023, so kind of soon, because I don't know how we're already in October. Um, and I guess I've heard it say like Team Body, but basically I was listening to a training right before this of our way, way, way upline, Christine Dwyer. Um, she went live and kind of, she was at leadership and she was explaining all the changes. And I stopped, I'm not done yet, but it was stopping at this point of the name change. And basically the name change is really a message about our mission in like our mission changing. Cause I know we promote things like overall health, mindset, fitness. We're never like, let's just lose weight. It's all about the scale, diet. We never really do that. But our name of Team Beachbody rubs people the wrong way. So they're finally changing it. And I am loving how they're just really focusing on like mental health, longevity, finding like embracing the body you're in and not all about just changing yourself, but saying, I love my body, so I'm gonna show up and embrace this and treat it well. And they said health esteem a lot throughout his presentation and all the good stuff. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm super excited for this kind of mindset shift within our business that just aligns better with what we, already are doing I want to say at least our team I don't know all coaches but um I think it's going to inspire and maybe have more people join us based on that mission and that message behind our company um and from there I just think we could help so many more because it's not a diet culture anymore and that's what makes us unique and that's what makes us amazing and our name never really kind of like emphasize that we had to explain ourselves a lot. Um, so I'm going to mention this as well, and I don't know all the details, but I'm going to post them tomorrow and the link of this video that I'm watching from Christine Dwyer, but they're changing um, like how you earn commission, 
Um, there are some changes in how you get success club points. And I heard a little bit about it and it's actually good changes. So don't stress out. I know change can be overwhelming, but these are good changes and they're probably going to have to figure out the details and we're all going to learn something new, but it sounds like there's going to be more potential to earn success club points without them just buying a total solution pack. And in 2023, a total solution pack, it sounds like you're not going to have the choice to do bod or bod and body. It's going to all be together. So, um, like I said, I'll post the, it's an hour long and she went live about like all the changes. So I, I still have like three quarters to go, but I'll post it in there if you want to watch the video from her. And um, I'm sure we have a few months. So corporate's going to be putting out the memos and the images and all the details in the next three months. So we all can feel prepared, but I think it's something really exciting and it should pump you up and not keep you from doing what you're currently doing. Not say, oh, I'm going to wait till these changes happen. No, like keep doing what you're doing. Offer the total solution pack. Speak from your heart. Just knowing these changes are coming. <sighs> that was a lot. Any updates that I missed? Okay. If you think of any, just drop them in the chat. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on was... Um, <clears throat> We kind of said it in our WhatsApp group, and I know um, some of Corrine's team is not in there, but Becky and I were talking and brainstorming of things to get our challenge groups or accountability groups more interactive. And that includes our LFA gym group on Facebook, and that includes our BOD group. And we found that a lot of, like when we talk one-on-one -on -one with our challengers and clients, they have questions and they want to know about things. And we have a lot of that conversation going on in our WhatsApp group, which is just coaches. So we've been trying to kind of encourage you guys to share more in the Elevate Gym group and the BOG groups. Like, hey, are you guys going to do sure thing? The new program coming out. Hey, are you going to do this challenge on body? And sharing just more in those groups, because I know our clients will relate to it they'll feel more attached. Maybe they'll want to be coaches eventually because they're really diving in and they'll just feel like they're not alone. And I know um, just sharing like that we do struggle or whatever your day's bringing at you, like whatever it is, share it in that group. If it's related to your fitness, your um, nutrition or anything like that, because I feel like our groups are kind of getting like, I don't know the right word, but not everyone's participating or sharing their real life. So then people go in there and they're like, man, I just must be the crazy one who thinks this is really hard or whatever it is. And they're not. So I think if we can shift that mindset to anything fitness related, anything nutrition related, try to plug it into those groups. So our clients and everyone can really form that community. And then in the WhatsApp, we'll talk more about coaching stuff. And that could be questions about coaching and, um, thoughts and whatever can all be in that group and it's welcomed. It's just, I think having this shift will help our clients and keep them showing up and wanting to show up. And a good example for that and kind of what stemmed this conversation with Abby, I had one of my challengers that I'm checking in with daily and she and I are on a I actually have a reminder in my phone to text her at five in the morning every single day to work out because she needed accountability so I do but there was a morning that I slept in and I texted her I was like I'm so sorry I'm having a horrible day like didn't get my workout in and she replied and said, wow, it's nice to know that you sleep in sometimes too and have bad days. And I have more bad days than good days. But something that Abby always says, and we talk about a lot is like not being these fitness robots 
And also it's something that we pride ourselves in when we talk about the coaching opportunity is that we don't need to be the experts and that we're not the experts and we don't pretend to be, but we know we can find the answers. And so normalizing all of that a little bit more, and we do our WhatsApp group, we talk about it all the time. Oh my gosh, I'm just having a really hard day. My kids, blah, blah, blah. Those are the relatable things that our challengers need to have. And all of a sudden, just seeing some of the conversation shift over, there was an immediate response. We post our um, our monthly just challenge posts in the Elevate Gym. And usually it's radio silence besides like Abby engaging on them, just one, because she likes them and has verbalized that. And two, to keep that community going. And then Abby posts her things. But now that we've started posting some of the real talk, there is like seven, 10, 11 comments on the real life posts. So you can see it unfolding in real time and we need more of that just across the board and I think it'll only help and benefit especially the people that might be in the shadows there was someone that just posted in the elevate gym saying just the other day like I've been lurking for a while now and really need motivation or assistance or something so there are people lurking and watching and it's up to us to show the real world and not make them feel inadequate because they're not showing up or have questions or those things. So that's really a part of it. And just showing like the real world, how it's affecting just by shifting the few conversations we have. Yes. And honestly, just like you check into the bad group, try to check into the Facebook group and share a picture or your thoughts or whatever, because it is crazy how many people maybe feel more comfortable commenting in there now because they see other people doing it. But I love it. So I think it's going to be a nice transition um, and just help our community overall be more connected. The last thing before we dive in, um, the national wake up call this week is really good listen to it. Um, I did post it in our team page. Maybe you're going to listen to it twice, like Tiffany, three times. I know I was, I like listen and then I listen again and took notes. But um, what we do is super simple, guys. It's just, we have to do it. It's the discipline of doing it. And it's crazy how sim simplified she made it when she spoke about it. And you almost like laugh, like, why would I not be doing this? Um, so definitely listen, um, if you want to, in the team page, drop your favorite takeaways and just, it all starts with showing your journey. It all starts with showing who you are, how this has changed your life and finding your people. And I know a lot of us show up and we show our workouts and we show our food, but then we forget to show our life. So I just want to remind you guys to show up with what you were doing, but also show up with things that people can relate with you to you with that's not just fitness or nutrition because like I always say we are not just that we're so many more cooler things and that's how we get to meet our people and I think it's important and then from there she goes into just inviting people who notice and help people who say yes that's our job so go listen we're not going to talk about that long we have more fun stuff to talk about. I just um, want to say one thing, yeah. Abby. Um, she just literally simplifies how easy it is to invite people and like you're just having a conversation with them. So um, definitely listen because like her little snippets, I was like, that's so easy. Like, why don't I address people like that instead of like this huge long thing? It doesn't need to be that difficult. Make it simple. She said, be a basic bitch, basically. So but I loved it. I was like, that's a great approach. So I'm going to change my approach and see how that goes. But yeah, just wanted to add that on. No, I think that's a good point. Cause it's like, we try to like put all these words together in these paragraphs, but literally an invite is like, I did it with the neighbor I've been walking with who has a baby. And 
I get nervous when I invite people I have to see. Oh my gosh, it's so scary, <laughs> but I do. But I was just like, she said she walks around the neighborhood a lot to get moving because she doesn't want to sit on the couch. And I was like, I texted her this morning and I was like, hey, I know you mentioned like you get tired of sitting around on the couch because she's a stay at home mom. If you ever want to do any at home workouts, like I'd love to chat with you because I can do them while I'm home with my kid too. That was my invite. And we like complicated and get in our heads, but it is so simple. And just talk like you're talking to them in person. Um, the last thing I will say about National Wake Up Call, she makes a great point of how preferred customers do not grow our businesses. So I know it's something new and maybe you don't even get how we have preferred customers versus coaches. She'll tell you a little bit about it, but like, why not invite to the coaching opportunity, giving them the opportunity to have someone sign up under them, become a coach, earn income, knowing that if they don't have a customer in six months, it's okay if they fall back into preferred customer, but why start them there? And she was really inspiring about that. So if you have any questions or thoughts or comments, let us know, but definitely want to listen to. Um, and final thing, I know I've been saying final thing, but this is for real. Our, we're day two of our coach event. It happened today. You guys all went live that are participating and it's going awesome. So that is a great example of a way to invite to coaching in a very casual way. Hey, come listen in about the opportunity no obligation. We're going to share all about it. Um, so I think I'm so proud of you guys for diving into that and going live and getting out of your comfort zone and sharing this opportunity with people as a group in a Facebook group where it's more comfortable, maybe for some of you guys versus one-on-one -on -one chats all the time. So that is really it. Did anyone have anything else before I dive in? We dive into everything else to our actual topic. Okay, so last week, I know we talked about day one and two of this whole rewire your mindset training that a bunch of us listened to. And I know not everyone has listened to it, but I still think it's so beneficial to talk about it and share our greatest takeaways because even as we change our name to body, they keep touching on mindset. They said, um, oh my gosh, I thought I wrote it down, but it's like, we have to focus on that mental health and mindset to make a change. And I think this training with the whole rewire your mindset on day three and four that we're going to talk about today is so key because we get caught up in all the other things and we forget, like, we're not here to get them into perfect shape and like not mess up and all the things we're here to help our people feel better. and believe in themselves and know that they're capable of doing this. And I think that's our job as a coach. And we get so caught up in the physical stuff that um, we forget about the mindset stuff and we lack in it. And then it feels really hard to kind of be successful. So with that, um, day three was about, let me make sure my notes are correct. Cause I believe what does that word say? <laughs> so day three was about time and money. And then day four was about, um, wasn't this about being, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of the word. Appreciative. <laughs> That's not the right word. Um, what you're grateful for, like appreciating. Um, the things I can't think of the right words and I didn't write the topic down, but let's start with, like, sorry, it was like, like aligning yourself. Is that what you're looking okay. for? Like I alignment. So. <laughs> he like had a title that was like at the very top and I didn't write it down, but yeah, I don't remember. Um, so for time and money, did you guys that listen, do you have key takeaways that you think people on this call can benefit from in regards to mindset? 
So on day three, my takeaways, I'll just share what I wrote down because I didn't do a ton of notes. I feel like after day two, I was just listening and trying to absorb it because I feel like sometimes when you take notes, you kind of just, you miss something. And I tried to jam pack all those days into three. So um, he spoke about how you can't blame the season of life that you're in on lack of success. And I feel like that hit home for me because especially today, um, I had somebody quit coaching after she joined last week and things weren't aligned for her. And I, you know, text Jesse, I text Abby and Becky. And I was like, I feel like a failure. And Jesse put it in perspective that, you know, it's not the right season and I'm in a different type of season than she is in. And, you know, I can't blame that on the season that I'm in and it's not a lack of, it's not failure, but it's not a lack of success either because I have other people, like I had another coach reach out to me asking questions. Holly and I had a good conversation today. So I was like, the negative I had, I said, that's done. I'm going to move on from that because there's success in other areas. So you can't let that be like, um, you can't let that be the blame game. Um, your job is to honor the season that you're in and there'll never be a right time to change your life. That's huge. He literally talked about that every day. People are always like, I'll, I had a, a conversation with a coworker today. I said, Hey, did you try those workouts that I gave you? My, I work with a bunch of nurses and I'm not, I am not a nurse, but the habits that we like that, that nurses have are they're so unhealthy because like people are bringing in food they, they're just, you know, they eat out a lot. And I'm just like noticing all these things. And I'm just sitting there like, what'd you bring for lunch? And I was like, um, I made it myself. And I'm like hiding. And then I'm like, no, I'm going to share. So I asked her about workouts and she said, I haven't gotten to, I'm going to start Monday. And I was like, I gave those to you two weeks ago. And she goes, I know, I know. I'm like, why not start now? Why wait? Mon you don't need to start on a Monday. You can start on a Wednesday. And she's like, yeah, you're right. But I'm going to start Monday. I was like, all right, whatever. So there will never be the right time. So you might as well just do it now. Um, your mind needs to be wired to see time differently. And then are you using your business to stay in your comfort zone? So that was a big one. And then overwhelming, overwhelm is not your solution. solution. It's your escape. So a lot of people will blame being overwhelmed and they'll use that as an escape route. Like, oh, I'm overwhelmed. I can't do that. And I also was using that as I'm listening to him. I'm like literally saying, I don't have time for this. <laughs> this is overwhelming. There's too much to do. And I'm like, oh my God, you're like literally talking to me right now. So I just took it day by day and I, you know, I made time for it and I didn't make excuses. Um, it doesn't matter how busy you are. It's if you want to change or not. So basically he's talking to me about how, we all are busy and we all, you know, we don't have, sometimes we don't have the luxury, like Abby, like she works from, she, she does this full time. She's a new mom. She gets to do this all day long. If she wants a lot of other of us on the team have full-time jobs and maybe they don't have that time during the day to do this. So they have to make the time. And if you guys want to make this work, you have to put in the work. You have to put in the time. And that's what I was getting from him was like, you can't say you're too busy. Everybody's too busy, right? Like you're never going to have time. Like you're never gonna be like, oh, I have an hour. Cause let's be honest that hour, you're probably watching Netflix or scrolling social media. And that hour of social media scrolling could be productive coaching time. Right. I catch myself doing that too. So on weekends, I schedule time for, for this rather than if I need to take a nap when my son's napping, sometimes I don't nap. Sometimes I do this instead and you have to make those sacrifices. So I, day three was great. Um, I have stuff more on day four, I think, but that's what I took away from day three. Does anyone else want to share? So all my notes, again, like I shared last time, they are all in my phone. And I did not at this point, like, figure out which ones are what day. So it's all just blended. But, and then now, of course, like, 
this is just the universe telling me not to use my phone because I had it up, it was all ready, and now it's just a black screen. And that's where my notes are. But you can see them all right there, but then when you click it, they're gone. So off the dome, this is what I remember after just speed reading my notes. The few things that I do remember one specifically about money and how it like directly impacted me. Um, and I don't even know if I mentioned this. I don't know what days what my whole life is just blurring. Um, but he talked about money mindset, like being like the breath flowing in and out. And I don't know what day that was or if we even talked about it already. But that's this day, Abby. Cool. Um, so he talked about money flowing and I share this story and Heather knows Heather actually sent me my realtor, um, when I bought this house and this house that I'm in was way over my price range. And the realtor even looked at me like I was kind of crazy. She's like, why are we looking at this? This is way out of all the houses that you want to buy. And I was like, "Ugh, my mom sent it to me and we have to buy it. Like we have to look at it just to appease my mother. So we come to this house. Of course, I fall in love with it. Brand new everything. And we go out to the car and my realtor is like, all right, let's put in an offer. And I was like, Debbie. I don't have enough money for this house. It's way out of my price range. And she was so lackadaisical and was just like, eh, it's just money. It's just numbers. We can move numbers. And I was like, uh, no, Debbie, we can't. The bank gave me this much money for my house. I have this much in the bank. Neither of those equal this house. Obviously, I'm in it. Debbie was right. Money moves. I have no idea what black magic she did or how I made it work, but I trusted the process and allowed it to flow and I got my house. And so in that similar sense, he put it into perspective as like money is just money and it flows in and out and he compared it to the breath. And if you hold your breath you'll suffocate. But if you breathe in and out, the breath continues to come and it goes. And I realized for me, I've had this chunk of money sitting in my savings because, you know, I'm hoarding it for like a case of emergencies. But frankly, it's not even enough money for my case of emergencies. So my credit card is used for my in case of emergencies. And my credit card keeps racking up and Stevens keep racking up. And we've been helping each other pay it off. But after thinking of this like hoarding the money and that when you breathe in, like you're suffocating yourself. So when you have money and you're just suffocating it, nothing else is going to be able to flow because you've stopped that. So I came right home and I sent Steven like $400 to pay towards his credit card because I did have it and I should have been doing that. That's our partnership and what we've been working towards, but I've been hoarding it because I didn't feel like I had the money to do so. And so being able to look at it as fluid, now I feel much more comfortable and not in this scarcity mindset because then you're not in alignment. You're just basing things off of fear. And so, oh, my notes came back. And then this is part of it saying that circumstances need to change before I can change my environment. And when you focus on your problems, your problems keep appearing. And so that's the same thing. If you focus on how much you don't have money, you won't have money. But if you focus on, no, I'm going to put this money out and it's going to come right back, it will do so. Um, and then Another thing, and I feel like Tiffany, you and I can identify with this, and this is probably going into the later dates, but the thought process on perfection, and they talked about like, if I'm perfect, then I'm worthy. And that's something I really identify with, but I know it's not healthy and trying to unlearn those behaviors. And especially because for me, I always felt like, 
okay, I will feel better once I graduate. And then I got my master's degree and I was like, this is something people like want. And when I got my master's degree, I was always looking for the next thing, which was my license. It's what I've always wanted. Once I got my license, I'm like, now I need to open my private practice. Now I have a private practice, but again, it's still, I mean, we can go on forever. It's not enough. It's never enough. I'm always looking for this next achievement. And he said, achievement without fulfillment is failure. Perfection is the lowest standard you can set for yourself because it guarantees pain. And that's something for us to like, and for me personally, it really spoke to me because I am that person that always looks for the next thing. And when you take that to coaching, I hit Ruby immediately. I'm like, it's not good enough because I'm not diamond. And I can see myself that I'm like, okay, I'm diamond, but I want to be one star diamond, like always wanting more, but knowing to be happy where you're at in the present moment, acknowledge all that's come to that point. And Abby and I were just, I was reflecting with Abby about how far our team has come and our coaching events, but it's so easy to get stuck in the, but we're not where we want to be, but looking how far we've grown and being happy with that. I think that's all part of alignment. So. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, here, sorry. Uh, one of like my favorite quotes um, that he said for, I think it was on, yeah, day, day three still, um, is that you will be in your situation either way. So you need to learn to enjoy it, enjoy the ride, or you'll be miserable for years. You have to choose to appreciate it. And I had this conversation with Mike so many times when we first moved here, like he was just making everything a miserable experience. And I was like, we're stuck here no matter what, like we're only going to be here for a few years. Like we need to find the joy in it somehow. So like that definitely like hit me and I could relate to that. So, so that was probably like my favorite quote from that day. We can go on to day four. <laughs> Someone else wait, can start. I need to read my stuff. Wait, Tiffany, you had something you wanted to say. I think it was on day. I don't know what the days are either. So I was just going to wait till day four. So I don't know if Abby. That's okay. We can time. combine them and share them all. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, so yeah, and this was kind of touched on already a little bit, but just the the fact that um, he stressed a lot how like sacrificing does not bring success because then you're not going to want to succeed um, because if you like constantly are thinking that you're going to that you have to work harder to reach your goals then you're just going to like all the enjoyment's going to be taken out of your life and um, he talked about like that's how burnout happens and that does not bring success either and then the, there were two quotes uh, I don't know if that's a quote, but one quote was success without fulfillment is failure, which I think someone just said that. I don't know who, um, which was great. And then the, um, yeah, success without fulfillment is failure. That goes, I think it was Becky because she was talking about perfection. Um, and just the whole idea of that we, I mean, it's so natural for all of us to be like, yeah, obviously if I want to reach my goals, then I have to work harder. I have to put time in. I have to sacrifice time with my family or I have to sacrifice whatever, an hour of TV in the night. Um, but really it's, yeah, you have to like sh turn that switch on your in your brain to where you figure out, no, like when I set these massive goals, that I actually want to achieve, then it really does pull you towards it rather than like leave you there pushing for it. And so that's just something because I'm going through the rewired program, but that's something that's like majorly impacted me is just like, holy cow, it's so true. Because now I'm like, I'll wake up and I'm like, I'm ready to go. Let's just do all this right now and knock it out. And it's just like so much more of a pull and so much more energy that just comes naturally. 
Um, so yeah, it's just been interesting just the last couple of days to be like, holy cow, I can totally switch that. And I, that is in my power to shift that mindset. So yeah, I, that's just where my focus has been to like have that actual fulfillment and have that actual just energy to, yeah, where I want to succeed by doing, I don't know, you, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I actually have written down. My last like quote that I had was your dream is not your chore. And if you do your invites and your work at the same emotional level, you do your laundry, you'll never succeed. And that's exactly what you're talking about. I never wake up and I'm like, oh, I'm super hyped to do my laundry. No, truth be told, I'm so embarrassed. I did my laundry on Sunday and I just remembered it was in the dryer today. So now I have to redo everything. But if I think of coaching business the same way as that, literally nothing's going to get done. It's going to be miserable. But on the contrary, I'm like, yay, I get this opportunity to do these things and I'm so excited. But yeah, shifting that mindset and making sure it's not the same energy as the laundry that I just left there for several days. I think he called that like forced effort and like, it's really based on like not being aligned. And I think it kind of goes back to how they're changing the name of Beachbody and like the mission and message because she was mentioning, Christine was mentioning on the call, like some of the top coaches were looking to not be with speech body anymore because they did not feel aligned. And I think that's super powerful because they know, like, it just all clicked to me, like, oh, she was successful. She felt aligned now. She doesn't feel aligned. So she doesn't think she can be successful. But in regards to us, we have so many things in our business that you should be able to find your alignment. Like, I know you guys joined because you believe in it. You love the programs, you love the products. And it's just finding that alignment of how it fits into your life. And it is so cool because um, I wrote never reaching, you'll never reach your biggest goals due to restricted energy. And it just all goes from like, the mindset of I have to hustle, I have to work harder, I have to miss out on this, I have to do that into alignment. And it just becomes easy and flows. And I know it's all starting with our mindset. Like if coaching excites you and you have big goals, you should be excited to do it. Um, and yes, sometimes things come easier at certain times. Like sometimes I'm not in the mood to invite, so I do it later. Or you have to listen to that bot, that part of like, your brain and body. But um, one thing I found really interesting was um, he gave like examples of what misalignment feels like. And I think a lot of us feel that in our day-to-day -day lives with other things. Um, and he said, um, you're not feeling like yourself. You feel like you're missing something. Um, you're external reality does not equal what you desire you're in physical pain that you can't explain you're sluggish tired feel stuck you feel like you're rushing but always behind even if there's nothing to do like you're just like not it's misalignment you're just like what the heck I don't know where I want to be it doesn't feel right and I think like for me and I don't know if you guys can relate to this but when I said yes to coaching I felt like I was missing this passion. I hated my corporate job. I hated pretty much everything in my life back then, minus my dog. But um, I felt like I was missing like what I was put on this earth to be. I felt like I was missing this passion of mine. And then coaching filled that. And then I was able to grow on it. On it. And I felt all those things. Like, I know we always say like, oh, I want to live this life and we speak all these things that we're sharing but are we actually living it and I think just baby steps to finding that alignment and I'm hoping coaching is that for you like something that feels aligned in your life and I hope we can pull more energy into that so then you're 
real energy and personality comes out. So then people want to join you because I wrote, people can feel your energy and will not join you if you're not speaking the truth and aligned. Um, and then finally I wrote achievement without fulfillment is ultimate failure. And I can relate to this, like, especially in my family, because, um, like my dad, for example, he worked his butt off, made all the money. My mom got to stay home with us. It was great, but all his achievement meant nothing because he missed out on life. He was miserable. He hated it. And I can tell now when I have conversations with him, like it was, yes, it was about the money, but like he never actually felt fulfilled and that is not success. And I know top um, leaders and companies think that is success to climb the ladder, but most of them are not fulfilled. So I think it's that fine balance of like trying to find what fulfills you and go after it no matter what time or energy um time or money looks like so I know a lot of the people in the, our business say time and money are like the two biggest excuses but it's crazy because the person limits their mindset is limiting to time and money and I think if we can teach this to people um getting started with us or coaches getting started with us that we do have time, we can make time um, and just teach them some of these mindset shifts. I think we're going to be really successful. So I'm excited to kind of lead with that um, as I help people versus just what we normally do. Celia, did you have anything? I know you were excited about it. I think I'm more day about day four. I, I don't want to get into it too much. I know we kind of like wrapped everything up really nice in the boat right there. Um, even my, my mind is 20 million places today. Um, I think the biggest thing from day four, day three, I think it was, or no, this is day four. What am I saying? What am I doing? A lot of things that I came up with um, overall for day four was the four things that change, you have to change no matter what. That's not, you can't, you can't change without that. And then the meaning to your challenge is 100% yours. So no one can change that. So whatever you're doing is how you're going to change it and why you're changing it. It doesn't matter who says what, don't keep it in, holding it in. Um, and then the last thing that I think that was really impactful to me was lessons are found in our challenges. So what challenges us basically can just hold everything in and end up being more than what you think you need it in the end, because I've been learning that lately, <laughs> honestly, after, after listening to Brandon last week, Brad last week, um, seeing that now, definitely, and not holding anything in, trying to do that. So it, it was interesting. It was very eye-opening. I didn't catch day five yet, but hopefully I'm going to catch it later tonight, but it was very interesting. I also enjoyed the exercise. I know, Jesse, you posted about it yesterday, this more afternoon. The exercise, I was literally sitting here on my bed listening to, the, listening to it. I was almost bawling after we got done with it, the challenge, with listening, trying to picture what a goal was for us and if we did hit it or not. And my, my response at the end was, it's all going to be okay. And I just, I don't know. It kind of just hit me in my feels last week when I got home. I was like, okay well, this is what we're going to do. So it's all going to be okay in my mind, hopefully, eventually. We'll see how it goes. You said challenges. What was it? Challenges or struggles? Challenges. There's a couple. Of, um, I can read. I don't have light. Sorry. No, I just. No, it's okay. I didn't have, I didn't have light. Good. 
Uh, for things to change, you must change. The meeting to your challenge is 100% yours. And then lessons are found in your challenges. Lessons are found in your challenges. I like that one. I feel like, Abby, you uh, with your story, and then I know I can identify with that a lot. And the hardest things that I've ever gone through, I can honestly say, like, I wouldn't change those things for the world because they are what made me who I am today and how I got here. And I had to be at rock bottom to then build myself up to this healthy place that I am today. So that those challenges I absolutely can identify with. And I feel like we all have a story that we can know that from as well. But being able to shift that mindset also is incredibly important. And I think a lot of people feel like they're alone and they don't share their struggles and social media looks perfect. So I think as coaches, it's a really good opportunity to share our struggles and how we've grown from it. And however that feels right to you, however much detail you give, but that's what people are going to relate to. And I know in our business, it's the hardest thing to share, but that's what people, they'll be like, wow, I agree with that. Or I feel that. And they keep following you and watching you and they're like, wow, how is she so like, she's like happy and glowing and whatever, but like she went through all this crap and it just gives people hope, I think. And part of our job is letting people know that there is a solution and they can feel better. Um, yeah, I think. That's a really good takeaway. I've had people where I just kind of share a little bit about my story and like how I'm grateful that I'm here now. And I've had people message me and they're just like, hey, I'm going through this right now. I know you've gone through it. How, like, talk to me. Like, I don't know where, what to do. And it's kind of crazy because I would have never shared that but people are watching and struggling and they just need someone to talk to sometimes. And that's where you build like the best relationships with people, which then honestly, my health and fitness and coaching got me through all my struggles and that's the truth. So maybe they'd want to do this with me. That's obviously not the first reaction I have when they reach out, but I know it's something that helped me. Um, any other thoughts? All right. I hope this kind of certain things that we've talked about just resonate with you and you feel like, okay, I want to work on this or I want to take action on this because you know it can make a difference. And a lot of this is all start. It is all starting in ourself. And maybe it's in your full-time job, maybe it's with your husband or your kids or whatever, but I think all of this that we've talked about the past two calls can make a difference in your life. And if you are showing up with the energy of just like literally being grateful and happy and have joy, people are going to see it. And that's not saying every day is perfect. You're allowed to bitch and complain. I got it. But like, it's just, I just know since I've done these trainings, I've woken up and dude, my days never go as planned. Not once, but like, instead of getting pissed off or anxious and stressed that she's not going to sleep, I try to like literally take a deep breath and enjoy the present moment with her, knowing that I will have time to get everything else done. And I've never not like, finish the day feeling like it was great. Like I just get in my head in the moment. So I just want you guys to know, like, maybe I need to do a better job of sharing that, but literally everyone's day is a shit show. And if we can show them that it's okay to have these moments, but still show up as a better human and do these things for ourselves. I think that's what people cling to. They're like, wow, She's going through all this crap and it's chaos, but she can still show up for herself 
and she's still smiling and happy and enjoying life. And I think that's the impact, at least I wanna make, I don't know if you guys can relate to that. All right. I have a question. Yeah. Um, I know you and Tiffany both got um, like join rewired. What what is it like? Because I'm thinking about it. Like what exactly? Would um, it be? <laughs> I took a picture of everything you get, but right well, now I put all that. But I mean, like, what is like the actual trainings? Like, is it just like, is it him talking? I, I'm mm -hmm. assuming it's live. Um, is it PowerPoints? Like, what kind of? It's him in videos it? and he has them like separated by modules. And then it's kind of like what he did on the live Facebook. Like he has that same energy. He's in the same office. He's talking about the things, but he's going a little bit deeper and Tiffany's further than me, but um, they're like 20 minutes each, give or take each section of the module. And then you, um, he's been giving an action. And then you're a part of another community, which, um, is supportive. There's podcasts he has, which I think they're private and like special to just his clients. Um, and then there's going to be sessions starting, I believe the 26th on a Wednesday where it's like live, get on zoom and communicate and talk. And like, he's going to show up in person versus going through the modules yourself. But the modules are literally like the things he shared for free, but a little deeper. Is that what you would say, Tiffany? Yeah, I'm he very far. a lot of the same messages and everything, um, but he definitely does go deeper. Like it's not just like the ones he did on the five day, that was very, very surface, I feel. Um, but then, yeah, because there's like 79 videos, I think, a total. And then there's like a whole workbook and stuff too, which is just like notes. And then there's the prompts or like questions that he wants us to think about, goal setting, whatever else. So, I mean, it's it's really good. I've, I've like, it's been very eye-opening for me. So it's already changing my life in three days. So I would recommend it. So you definitely think it's like worth the money? Then. So far, yeah. I mean, just the changes I've seen already, yes. I'm hoping that I see way more changes, but I mean, I'm only still in lesson one or module one or something. So, but yeah. So there's like a lot of, you said there's like 70 some videos. Okay. Yeah. And I think there's like six modules or something, but you know. I was trying to pull it up. I'm in the middle of one right now, but yeah. So you know how, well, on day five, he went through like that wheel of um, the key steps to like rewiring your brain or your mind. So there's like each module, it's like dream is module one, awaken is module two, prepare is module three, drive is module four, accelerate is module five, and arrive is module six, like the whole cycle that he talked about. And I believe there's like a big chunk of lessons within each module and I'm really interested because he says he has office hours so like you could go to him and like literally be like this is my situation help me <laughs> but yes I'm not the furthest in yet but he does emphasize you're never late or behind you go at your own pace and it's better to not speed through it and just really take it in. So that made me feel better about it as well. Yeah, that's what like, um, I just finished day five today. So I was like worried that it was like something you had to like continuously be doing. And I was like, with like gonna be having a baby in the next like two months, like I don't, like I mentally and like, I know I wouldn't be able to keep up with that. But now knowing it's kind of like do at your own pace in your own time, that makes me feel better. And more confident that like I could do it around time <laughs> so yeah I think it's gonna be just like a deeper dive like really looking in at yourself and Tiffany says calling yourself out basically of like oh okay here we are yeah. like a reality check but you get a lot of content
So I'm trying not to let it overwhelm me. But, and we can keep sharing, like if you guys think this is beneficial, we can keep sharing stuff as we learn it. I mean, maybe once a month or whatever works. Is anyone else doing it or thinking of doing it? Because I think tonight um, it closes. No. And then I know, Celia, you said you wanted to watch the last video. I think that goes those closed tonight too. Yeah, I'm going to try to get into that later before I go to bed. Hopefully here in the next hour or so after we get off. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we are at our hour. So I hope this was helpful. There's lots of exciting things coming. Lots of things that you can maybe shift your own mindset of how you want to run your business in alignment with yourself and your, how you want your business to be. And yeah, I think it's going to be great. So if you have any questions or think of anything, just let us know, but I'm sure we'll talk tomorrow. Like we talk every day and I'll post the recording. Um, I've been putting it up on YouTube and then posting it on the team page. So it will be there forever. All right, guys, have a great night. night. I'll talk to you later. Have a good night. Bye.